Have you ever wondered what drives a person to destroy everything they love? The story of Christopher Foster is a chilling example of how a life of luxury can spiral into a nightmare, ending in a horrific act that shocked the world. And how a man who, when faced with losing it all, chose to take matters into his own hands with devastating consequences. Christopher Foster wasn't just any man with big dreams. He was someone who chased those dreams with an almost ruthless determination. Starting from modest beginnings, he didn't just want success, he craved it, and he found it in the most unexpected of ways. You see, back in the late 80s, a horrific tragedy unfolded that would change the course of his life. The Piper Alpha oil rig explosion in 1988 was a disaster that claimed the lives of 167 men and sent shockwaves through the industry. Most people saw it as a heartbreaking loss, but Chris saw something different. He saw an opportunity. Using his sharp mind and a keen sense for business, Chris developed a revolutionary fire-resistant insulation for oil rigs, a product that would go on to make him a fortune. It wasn't long before the money started pouring in, and almost overnight, he was thrust into the world of the rich and powerful. His company took off, contracts flooded in, and Chris Foster became a self-made millionaire. He indulged in everything that money could. What no one saw coming was that, behind the opulence and grandeur, Chris Foster's empire was slowly but surely crumbling into dust. It's almost hard to believe that someone living in a mansion, surrounded by luxury cars and private lakes, could be drowning in debt. But that's exactly what was happening. The lavish lifestyle that Chris and his family flaunted was built on a foundation of financial instability that was shaking at its very core. Chris's spending was completely out of control. It was like he had this insatiable need to prove to the world, and maybe to himself, that he was still the successful businessman he once was. But here's the grim reality. By 2007, his company, the very thing that had catapulted him to millionaire status, was in liquidation. The numbers were staggering. Chris wasn't just in debt, he was buried under a mountain of it, a whopping four million pounds deep. Imagine that kind of pressure, knowing that everything you've worked for, everything you've built, is slipping away right before your eyes. But instead of facing the harsh truth, Chris decided to double down on the facade. He couldn't let the world see his cracks, so he did what many would consider the unthinkable. He mortgaged his home, not once, not twice, but multiple times, and that wasn't enough. He borrowed from more than 20 different banks, each loan a desperate attempt to plug the holes in his sinking ship. It's almost painful to think about, isn't it? The lengths he went to just to keep up appearances, to maintain that image of wealth and success, even as everything around him was crumbling. The stress must have been unbearable. Every day, Chris was waking up to a life that was, quite literally, built on debt. And yet, he continued spending like there was no tomorrow, as if ignoring the problem would somehow make it disappear. But deep down, he had to know that the walls were closing in, that the life he had worked so hard to create was on the verge of collapsing. It's easy to see how someone in that situation might feel trapped, with no way out. And for Chris, that sense of entrapment and impending doom led him down a dark, irreversible path that would soon culminate in tragedy. It's almost unimaginable to think about what went through Christopher Foster's mind on the night of August 25th, 2008. Just hours before, the Fosters were at a barbecue, laughing and socializing like everything was perfectly normal. They were the picture of a happy family. No one would have guessed the dark thoughts lurking beneath Chris's calm exterior. But as the evening wore on, something in Chris snapped and he spiraled into a place of utter darkness. When they returned home that night, the Fosters did what they usually did. Jill went to bed, Kirsty stayed up late, texting friends, and Chris, well, he was quietly descending into his hell. By 3 a.m., Chris had made a decision that would forever mark one of the most horrific acts of violence a family could endure. In the dead of night, he took a silenced gun, cold, deliberate, and deadly, and walked into the bedroom where his wife Jill lay peacefully asleep. Without a moment's hesitation, he shot her in the back of the head. Just think about that for a second. The woman he had spent years building a life with, the mother of his child, and he ended her life in the most brutal and calculated way possible. But Chris wasn't done. He walked across the hall to his daughter Kirsty's room, where she was sleeping, probably dreaming about her horses or the next day at school. She had no idea what was coming. He lifted the gun again and pulled the trigger, shooting her in the head just as he had done with Jill. It's chilling to imagine. A father, who should be a protector, instead turning into a cold-blooded killer. This wasn't some crime of passion. It wasn't done in the heat of an argument or out of momentary rage. This was premeditated, methodical murder. 
Chris knew exactly what he was doing, and he did it without a hint of hesitation. The thought that he could do this to the people he supposedly loved the most, to his flesh and blood, is beyond comprehension. It's the kind of thing that makes your skin crawl, knowing that this man, who once cherished his family, could turn so completely against them. And yet, this was only the beginning of the horror that would unfold that night. After Chris Foster had taken the lives of his wife and daughter in the dead of night, you might think that the horror would end there, but Chris wasn't done. What followed next was a chilling sequence of events that only deepened the darkness of that night. It's as if, in his twisted mind, he had to erase every trace of the life he once knew, ensuring that nothing would be left behind for anyone to mourn or remember. Chris stepped outside into the cool night air, but there was no peace to be found. His next targets were the family's beloved pets, their dogs, who had likely been a source of comfort and joy in better times. These animals, who had given nothing but unconditional love, were met with the same cold, calculated brutality. One by one, Chris shot each dog in the head. Just imagine the silence of that night, broken only by the muffled gunshots and the thud of bodies hitting the ground. It's hard to wrap your head around how someone could do that, not just to his family, but to the creatures who trusted him completely. But it didn't stop with the dogs. Chris made his way to the barn, where the family's horses were kept. These were Kirsty's pride and joy, the animals she had spent countless hours caring for and riding. And in a horrifying act of cruelty, Chris shot each of the horses as well. The barn, once a place of life and energy, became a silent tomb. And if that wasn't enough, Chris set the barn on fire, watching as the flames began to consume everything inside. The fire wasn't just a means to destroy the evidence. It was an act of utter devastation, a final insult to the life that had once thrived there. But Chris wasn't just content with killing his family and their animals. He wanted to make sure that no one could save anything from the wreckage. He took a horse trailer and parked it in front of the entrance to the estate, deliberately blocking the path for any would-be rescuers. As if that wasn't enough, he slashed the tires, ensuring that the trailer couldn't be moved easily. It's like he wanted to buy time to let the fire do its work without interruption, knowing that the more time it had, the more complete the destruction would be. Inside the house, the flames were spreading rapidly, consuming everything in their path. The beautiful mansion, filled with luxury and opulence, was turning into an inferno, but Chris wasn't running from it. No, in a final almost surreal act, he re-entered the house. Amidst the raging fire, he found his way back to Jill's lifeless body. He lay down beside her as if in some twisted way, he wanted to be close to her in death. The fire that engulfed the Foster Mansion wasn't just any ordinary blaze. It was a raging inferno that consumed everything in its path. For three long days, the flames roared on, turning what was once a symbol of wealth and success into a smoldering pile of ash and debris. It wasn't until the fire had finally burned itself out that investigators could even think about entering the charred remains of what used to be the Foster family's home. And when they did, what they found was nothing short of a nightmare. As they sifted through the rubble, the gruesome reality of what had happened began to unfold. There, Amidst the blackened ruins, they found the bodies of Chris and Jill Foster, intertwined in death just as they had been in life. The sight was haunting. Two people who had once lived in such opulence were now reduced to nothing more than charred remains, clinging to each other in the devastation. It was clear that Chris had planned every detail of this horrifying act with cold precision, ensuring that nothing and no one would escape the destruction. But the most heartbreaking discovery came later. As investigators continued to search the ruins, they found small fragments of bone pieces of a skull that upon closer inspection were identified as belonging to Kirsty, Chris and Jill's beloved daughter. It was a gut-wrenching confirmation that she too had been shot, just like her mother. The thought of this young girl, who had her whole life ahead of her, being cut down in such a brutal and senseless way, is almost too much to bear. The horror didn't end there. Security footage recovered from the scene painted a chilling picture of that fateful night. The cameras captured Chris moving methodically through the house, executing his plan with cold, robotic efficiency. There was no hesitation, no remorse, just a man on a mission to destroy everything he had ever loved. Watching those videos, you can almost feel the weight of his despair, the crushing realization that he had lost control of his life, and the terrifying lengths he was willing to go to avoid facing the consequences of his failures. As the investigation unfolded, it became clear that this wasn't just a tragic story of financial ruin. It was much deeper than that. This was about a man who couldn't bear the thought of losing the life he had built, the image he had cultivated. Chris Foster was so consumed by his pride and fear of humiliation that he chose to annihilate everything rather than admit defeat. In his twisted mind, it was better to destroy his family and himself than to let the world see him fail. In the aftermath of the fire, 
The community was left in shock. The Fosters had seemed like the perfect family, successful, happy, living the dream. But beneath that veneer of perfection was a darkness that no one had seen coming. The remains of the mansion stood as a grim reminder of the night when everything went up in flames, both literally and figuratively. It was a tragedy that would leave a scar on everyone who knew them, a stark warning of the dangers of letting pride and fear drive you to the brink of destruction. Why did Chris Foster do it? That's the question that haunts everyone who hears this story. Was it out of some twisted sense of love, like his mother believed? Did he truly think he was sparing his family from the humiliation of losing everything? Or was it something much darker, an act driven by overwhelming pride, by a man who couldn't stand the thought of anyone else having what he had lost? It's hard to say, and maybe we'll never fully understand what pushed Chris over the edge that night. His mother, Enid, was convinced that Chris acted out of love, trying to protect Jill and Kirsty from the inevitable downfall that was coming. In her eyes, he couldn't bear to see them stripped of their lifestyle, their home, their status. To her, it was a final, desperate act of a man who believed he was saving his family from a fate worse than death. But is that really what was going on in Chris's mind? Was he so consumed by the thought of his family living in poverty, so terrified of them losing everything, that he thought killing them was the only way out? On the other hand, there's a darker theory, one that paints Chris as a man who was driven by nothing but pride. A man who couldn't bear the thought of his possessions, his wealth, his carefully crafted life being taken away. Maybe for Chris, it wasn't about sparing his family from poverty. It was about control. He had always been the one in charge, the one who made things happen. And when he saw that slipping away, he decided that if he couldn't have it, no one else could either. The fact that he destroyed everything, his home, his cars, his family, suggests that maybe this was his way of going out on his terms in a blaze of fire and destruction. And then there's the possibility that it was a combination of both, a cocktail of love, fear, pride, and desperation that led Chris to commit these horrific acts. Perhaps he did love his family, but his love was twisted by his ego and his need to control everything around him. He might have believed he was protecting them, but in reality, he was ensuring that no one else would have a say in their fate, not even Jill or Kirsty. We can speculate all we want, but the truth is, we may never know exactly what drove Christopher Foster to do what he did. What we do know is that his story is a chilling reminder of how quickly a life of luxury can turn into a nightmare. One minute, you're living in a mansion, surrounded by wealth and comfort, and the next, everything is gone, consumed by flames and darkness, all because of one man's inability to face his failures. So, what are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments below.